some fur work today uh, gonna start getting these furs I've collected this year tanned up uh, gonna try some new tanning methods so uh, don't know how that's gonna work out but we'll see uh, first thing I'd like to encourage everybody if you're going to get into fur work uh, talk to somebody who does it you poke their brain taxidermist and so what uh, and get some knowledge on it. I also have a book on it. This is the book I've been reading up on. Give me some ideas on some different kinds of tanning. Uh, tanning Skins and Furs by James Churchill. The complete book of. So, uh, you know, I ain't no expert. So I'm going to take as much knowledge from other people that have done this as I can. And uh, what I'm going to start with is my mink I caught. This is him. Uh looks in really good shape uh, of course I froze him as soon as I after as soon as I skinned him and what you want to do after you skin him is uh, wash them real good and dry them fling dry them real good before you put them up to freeze because you don't want to have a bunch of you know you don't want to freeze them with a bunch of dirt on it and stuff like that it's just a lot of stuff you have to do later uh, this is him. Fur is all real good still. Nothing's really, nothing's pulling out of him. I'm kind of checking him to make sure he hasn't rotted. The uh, once they fur starts to slip, that means it's kind of the rotten way. I had some problems with my freezer. It was on and off, on and off, on and off. So I'm just making sure my fur's in good shape. Looks pretty good. First thing you do after you skin them, is flesh them. And basically that's all. You're just putting the hide up scraping the flesh to get all the fat muscle and membrane off the skin because if you don't get it all off the tan won't penetrate as good won't last as long all right so I got my mink thawed out he looks pretty good so I turned him inside out and I actually split this one up the chest all the way to his white dot uh, just for what I'm going to use him for and uh, I got him on my little this is a just a circled steak, wood steak, it's one and a half by one and a half, turned on a lathe, and just kind of smoothed out, and then not to a point, but you know, you don't want to hurt no skin, I just slide him on top of there, inside out, put his nose right at the top, and uh, you can actually push that in, and get in there, and clip some more of that nose off if you need to, but I'm going to do some fleshing today, they're very thin skin, the mink is. So I'm just going to use this paring knife. Uh, you might be able to use a spoon, but I'm just going to kind of come in there and make little cuts and get this skin off, this meat off of that skin. Very important that you don't cut in. You know, keep your knife at a nice angle that's not too steep. Don't put a lot of pressure into it. You can scrape if you want. Uh, scraping does get some a lot of it off, but I, I like to kind of shave it off. And don't worry about any small holes you put in there. Once you get him tanned out and turned over, you ain't gonna see that. And if it does bother, you can sew it up later. The old catfish skinners. Once you get that skin started, you can grab onto it. Sometimes it peels all the way down and gets them as this dries you'll be able to peel it you can use these but however you want to use it however you want to get that skin off or that flesh off there just do it the way you want to do it okay I just want to kind of give you a close-up of what's going on here you got your three layers you got your meat the fat and the layer you want to get to that's really white and it's got some indentions on it 
those are where the hair follicles are in it that means you're that's where you want to be you're through everything there and uh, if you get too close it'll look kind of like if you get too close you'll start seeing the hair pull through it kind of like that up there but that's basically what you're doing I'll give you kind of a half and half shot of what I've done and what I haven't and you can see on this side it's a different color than this bright white over here and that's what you want that bright white uh, it takes time and uh, the best way I like to run my knife especially when I get down in this part down here it's kind of take a bit and just kind of work my way down like this using the front of the knife to get in behind there and it comes off in pretty good chunks and then once I get the chunk kind of hanging there I might grab it with the pliers and pull and see that pull some of that up, up skin right there see that pulls the meat off and all I gotta worry about is the fat and then when you get real close sometimes like you got a little light color spot you can just scrape it and that takes some of that fat off but that's what you want is that really white part of the skin right there Alright, so I got it mostly fleshed now. Got a couple holes in him, but that's alright, that's fine. I don't know how much flesh I got here, but it's quite a lot. And if I need to do work on the face, I'll just drop it down over the mouth and that widens out. And I can do some more fleshing on the face. But that's pretty much it. It takes a while. No automation here. This is all done by hand, like they used to do it. And, uh, this mink oil, I'll tell you what, get some of that on your on your stone there. And that'll put the edge on a knife, I tell you. Put a little bit on your blade, just rub it in that mink fat. And that'll preserve preserve your knife blade. Alright, I got my mink mostly fleshed up. I'm going to take him in the house, wash him with some Dawn, let him dry a little bit, and uh, we're going to start the pickling process next. 